In this video, we're going to establish some of the key laws of indices. And we begin by reminding ourselves what we actually mean by an index or plural indices. An index or a power refers to the number of times a number is multiplied by itself. Take, for instance, three to the power of four or three to the fourth power. It's three times three times three times three, which is equal to 81. Now, what we've just done is evaluate three to the fourth power. We found its value. And we're going to look to develop some general rules that will help us to simplify expressions involving indices. Let's begin by looking at what happens when we multiply two numbers with powers or indices. Now, this is sometimes called finding the product since product means multiply but it's also worth noting that this only happens if the base, that's the big number, which is two here, is the same in both terms. So we're going to begin by simplifying two to the fourth power times two cubed. Notice that the question does say simplify, not evaluate. And so we're not actually going to try and work out the value of two to the fourth power times two cubed. Instead, we use the fact that the index refers to the number of times a number is multiplied by itself. And what this means is we can write two to the fourth power or two to the power of four as two times two times two times two. Similarly, we can write two cubed as two times two times two. And so if we multiply two to the fourth power by two cubed, we're multiplying two times two times two times two by two times two times two. Now, I've included brackets here to make it easier to see what's going on, but actually we don't need these when we're just multiplying. Now, of course, since this number is the same throughout, we can actually simplify this and write it as two to the power of seven. This is our answer in exponent form. So two to the power of four times two cubed is two to the power of seven. But could we have saved some time here? You might have noticed that the sum of four and three is equal to seven, and we can actually generalize. The rule is if the base, which is the big number here, that's two, is the same in our numbers, we multiply them by adding the powers. So x to the power of a times x to the power of b is x to the power of a plus b. This holds for both numerical terms and algebraic ones. So three squared times three to the power of nine is three to the power of two plus nine, which is three to the power of 11. It's worth noting that we do need to be a little bit careful when it comes to dealing with algebraic expressions whose coefficients are not equal to one. So four a to the fifth power times two a to the seventh power. In this case, we multiply the coefficients. So we times four by two to get eight, and then we add the powers of the algebraic part. Five add seven is 12. So this is 8a to the power of 12. Similarly, be careful when working with expressions that contain a variety of variables. So x squared y cubed times xy squared. We deal with the x's first. Now x by itself is x to the power of one. So x squared times x is x cubed. Then y cubed times y squared is y to the power of five since three plus two is equal to five. So we know what happens when we multiply these numbers, but what happens when we divide? Let's say we want to simplify three to the fifth power divided by three squared. And you might already have an inkling of what might happen, but let's check. We know that three to the fifth power is three times three times three times three times three. And we also know that three squared is just three times three. In turn, we can now rewrite our calculation as three times three times three times three times three over three times three. And of course, since we've written this as a fraction, we can simplify it by dividing both the numerator and denominator by any common factors. So let's divide by a three and then by another three. This means our fraction becomes three times three times three over one, which is just three times three times three. Now we're not going to work this out because we're simplifying and giving our answer in index form. So we're going to write that as three cubed. So three to the fifth power divided by three squared is three cubed, but can we generalize this at all? I wonder if you notice that just like as when we multiplied, we added the powers, when we divide, we can subtract them. Five minus two is three. 
To divide two numbers whose bases are equal then, we subtract the powers. For instance, 2 to the power of 7 divided by 2 squared will be 2 to the power of 7 minus 2, which is 2 to the power of 5. As we saw earlier, this holds for algebraic expressions. So y to the power of 4 divided by y to the power of negative 3 would be y to the power of 4 minus negative 3, which is 4 plus 3, which is 7. So it'd be y to the power of 7. We do, of course, need to be a little bit careful when dealing with multiple variables. In this case, let's begin by simplifying 12 over 2. And that gives us 6. Then a cubed divided by a squared is a to the power of 3 minus 2. So that's a to the power of 1 or just a. Then b squared divided by b is b. So this one would simplify to 6ab. We're going to consider one final law, and that's the rule that we have when we're working with numbers inside a pair of brackets. So let's look to simplify 4 squared cubed. We know that 4 squared is 4 times 4. And so 4 squared cubed will be 4 times 4 cubed. But of course we can write this as 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. Now we don't really need the brackets, but it's useful to help us see what's happening. Since there are 6 4s in this product, we can alternatively write this as 4 to the 6th power. So once again, let's see if we can spot a shortcut. Did you spot that 2 times 3 gives us 6? Well, in fact, this holds for all brackets. We multiply the powers, so x to the power of a to the power of b would be x to the power of a times b. Take 3 cubed to the 5th power, for instance. That would be 3 to the power of 3 times 5, which is 15. As always, this holds for algebraic expressions, but we need to be careful when we're dealing with a multiple number of variables. So 2x squared y all cubed, we'd need to cube each part. 2 cubed is 8. x squared cubed is x to the power of 2 times 3, which is 6. And then y to the power of 1, which is what this is, cubed would be y to the power of 1 times 3, which is 3. So 2x squared y cubed is 8x to the 6th power y cubed. And so there we have it, the three laws for multiplying, dividing and working with brackets with indices. Now it's your turn. Make your way over to download the worksheet called Laws of Indices, Multiplying, Dividing and Brackets. There are a variety of questions on each which progress in difficulty as you go through. You can give that a go and mark your work, but that's us done for this lesson. Hopefully we'll see you back here soon.